thank to the organizer for giving me this great opportunity to, to be here. And today I would like to tell you about um, how the nuclear dependent organization of some bacterial chemosensory complexes is important for some social behavior in uh, Myxococcus casantus. So let me first very briefly introduce you our bacterial model system. Again, it is Myxococcus xanthus, a gram-negative soil bacterium with a sort of a complex life cycle. In fact, bacteria can grow vegetatively on macromolecule or on other bacterial species in some predatory behaviors. But when nutrients become low in the environment, bacteria start aggregating, aggregating into mounds then later develop into fruiting bodies containing spores. And spores can germinate when conditions become, become uh, favorable again to, get, uh, to start a new life cycle. I really like this movie because it summarizes Myxococcus life cycle. So here is an, a Myxococcus uh, uh, colony and this is an E. coli colony. They are both on a starvation medium. And here we can see Myxococcus xanthus cells moving out from the initial spot and invading actually the E. coli colony, lies cells. At the same time, they form fruiting bodies here, which are these black spots because there are no nutrients. And when the E. coli colony is completely lysed and digested, they will form fruiting, fruiting bodies on the E. coli colony as well. In order to be able to do all this, bacteria actually have to do at least two things. So they have to be able to move on solid surfaces that we see here, single cells uh, can move, but they also have to be able to reverse at a certain frequency the direction of their movement. And why do they need to do so? They need to do that because they need to modulate their, their cell, uh, cellular direction. For example, if they are going towards a favorable condition, they will just go straight or reverse very unfrequently. But if they sense that they are actually moving towards a toxic environment, they will start reversing their, um, reverse their, their direction very often until they randomly happen to be in the, in, a, in the right direction. And they will stop reversing and keep going in that direction. And this is exactly what's called a chemotaxis behavior. So the control of the reversal frequency is also termed chemotaxis. And it is modulated by a chemotaxis system. So let me just move back and uh, tell you a bit what a chemotaxis system is. It is composed by some um, transmembrane uh, chemoreceptors, which are also termed methyl accepting chemotaxis protein. These proteins can sense um, signal, signals into the, um, from the periplasm. And when the receptor is active, it, it transduces the signal to some downstream components that can actually um, modulate the frequency of flagellar rotation in E. coli. So chemosensory systems uh, have been very well studied in E. coli. And this is a simplification of how the system is organized because it has a quite um, um, organized, um, uh, actually, they are quite, uh, quite organized in cells. For example, so here, first of all, receptors are able to form dimers, and each oval in this cartoon is a dimer. And dimers are organized in trimers. So basically, receptors form trimers of dimers that are embedded in the membrane, and they form highly ordered structures that are also kept together by the downstream components, key A and key W. And if we look at the transversal section of these uh, matrix of chemoreceptors, they look like hexagons, actually, that are very... Um, uh, ordered um, spaced in the bidimensional plate. And if we look at cryotomography uh, pictures of these, um, of these structures, we can actually resolve what's depicted, uh, what's represented here in the cartoon. We have the, the membrane and we have the plate of, of chemoreceptors. And here we actually can very nicely resolve the hexagons. And this structure is universally uh, present in bacteria. So all chemoreceptors that have been studied are organized this way in bacteria. However, they, they can have different cellular locations. So for example, in E. coli, chemoreceptors are, organized, are, are uh, localized at the cell pole, but in other bacteria, such as Pseudomonas aeruginosa or Rhodobacter spheroides, they have, other, they have different cellular localization. For example, here we can resolve clusters that are distributed laterally in cells or in Rhodobacter clusters that have different cellular location. 
And uh, um, however, again, they can all form clusters. And once again, this organization requires a scaffold, which is the membrane, because without the transmembrane domains, receptors are uh, diffused in the cytoplasm, and, and requires the downstream component, because without those, receptors are dispersed in the membrane. So to go back again to Mixococcus xanthus, as I said, the reversal frequency is modulated by a key-like system, which is here the Fried system, composed of some homolog of the key pathway in E. coli. I just wanted to tell you that this is, this is only one of many chemosensory systems in Mixo that we describe to be uh, highly organized again in Mixococcus cells. And this system in particular modulates the reversal frequency because if we make, for example, a mutant in the receptor, cells will, will stop reversing. Uh, or we can also generate constitutively active mutants that reverse very often as compared to Alpep. And uh, because, as I said, this receptor is cytoplasmic, we were very intriguing to know how, they, uh, how this system would localize in cells because so we were wondering what would the scaffold be for this um, chemosensory system. So we localized 3CD in cells. And uh, we actually found that 3CD GFP can form a lot of discrete clusters in cells that are distributed along the cell, but they are also very dynamic as cells move forward and reverse. And what was interesting was that actually cluster did not occupy the whole cell length, but they were mostly um, concentrated at the central region of cells. And this region has been recently described to be also occupied by the nucleoid in Mixococcus. So we were wondering whether PCD co-localized with the nucleoid in Mixococcus cells. And when we stain cells with the, the nucleoid DAPI staining, we can actually find, find that 3CD did localize with the nucleoid. And even if in cells that have the two segregated nucleoids, we can discriminate two um, sets of 3CD clusters. So we wonder whether other FRIDS protein localize, co localize with the nucleoid as well. So we co localize FRIDS E, which is the histidine kinase of the pathway. And when we generated the FRIDS EM share effusion, also FRIDS E localized with the nucleoid. And here we have the fluorescent profiles of either FRIDS CD in green or FRIDS E uh, in red and the nucleoid in blue. And of course, another question was, so is free CD responsible of this nucleoid localization as we would expect, or is rather FRIDS E? So we deleted FRIDS E and we actually found that the receptor is now dispersed as expected because, as I said, the, the formation of cluster, even in other bacteria, requires downstream components. But free CD still co localized with the, retained its ability to co localize with the nucleoid. However, when we remove free CD, FRIDS E is now completely dispersed in the, in the cytoplasm and even localized at the, pole, at the poles. And so actually we thought it was interesting to see what happened in cells that, are, that have a, a nucleoid segregation defect. And so, um, so how FRIDS E localized in these cells? So we generated a um, PARB uh, conditional mutant in Mixococcus xanthus, and as we can see in this, when we deplete PARB, we generate either anucleated cells or cells with an, 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 an aberrant constriction in the middle of the nucleoid. And we, when we localized either free CD or free E in this strain, we actually uh, found that free CD always followed the nucleoid. And even in anucleated cells, actually in anucleated cells, we don't have free CD. Same for free E. So just as a control, we localized another chemoreceptor in Mixo because we have the whole collection of Mixo chemoreceptors, in this case DIF A, and DIF A nicely localized even in anucleated cells, suggesting that this was a property specific of free CD. So now the question was, can free CD directly interact with the nucleoid? And first we did a very quick experiment, which, which is um, to express free CD GFP from Mixo in E. coli. And even if E. coli cells are much smaller than Mixo cells, we can still um, resolve a co-localization of free CD with the nucleoid. And again, because cells are small, we treated them with cephalexin, so we, are, we obtain actually artificially elongated cells where cells are undivided, but we can discriminate the different nucleoids, and we can actually see that free CD again co-localized with each one of the nucleoids. 
suggesting that 3CD could actually interact with different nucleoids. But this, this still didn't answer the question of whether 3CD directly interacted with the nucleoid, because they can, also, they can still be a third partner common to Mixo and E. coli that allow the 3CD uh, co-localization uh, um, co with the nucleoid. So we actually performed some in vitro experiments where we purified 3CD and incubated with some different DNA fragments of different length and nature. And actually, we incubated them together in gel shift experiment and, and, and found that actually 3CD can, um, can switch the mobility of DNA fragments, suggest, suggesting the formation of a complex between 3CD and the DNA. So 3CD, this result suggests that 3CD can direct interact with the nucleoid Next question was how, which region of the protein is involved in this nucleoid, nucleoid binding? So 3CD is composed of a very conserved C-terminal domain, which is the uh, chemoreceptor domain, and then terminus with unknown function. So we purified both these domains and used them in our uh, gel shift uh, assays and found that while the C-terminus is incapable to bind DNA in vitro, the N-terminus actually is able to bind DNA and we even actually did another type of experiment, which is bilayer interferometry, and we found that actually the N terminus is sufficient to bind DNA in vitro, even if at a slightly lower efficiency than the full length protein. So, um, of course, another question was now is this N terminus important for DNA uh, binding in vivo as well? So we just generated the strain where lacking the, the N-terminal domain, and now 3CD is incapable to form clusters, and it, it, it uh, basically is incapable to bind the, the nucleoid as we find it everywhere in the cells. Okay, so 3CD can bind the DNA with its N-terminal domain. So now the, another question that we wanted to answer is that so as I showed you um, in the beginning, 3CD clusters are very dynamic in cells. And so we wonder whether these dynamics were related to nucleoid dynamics or if they were related to the activity of the Fritz pathway. So we decided to really carefully analyze this cluster dynamics. And so we obtained uh, movies uh, of, uh, of cells um, each, uh, each second and we uh, obtained some uh, chymographs to actually track clusters over the time. And we can already see from here that we have some clusters that are more static and some clusters that are more dynamic, they make curves here. And we analyzed a lot of clusters and we actually in particular, we measured the mean square displacement of each cluster and we found that there are two populations of clusters, some clusters that are very mobile, but some clusters that are more static, and we also have some clusters with intermediate behaviors. So now, to know whether this dynamic were related to nucleoid dynamic or to the Fritz activity, actually, the fact that we have two populations already kind of suggests that they are not related with nucleoid dynamics, because otherwise we would have probably seen the same uh, uh, dynamics, the same behavior for, for all clusters. But we want to further investigate that. And so what we did, we treated cells with an activator of the Fritz pathway. In this case, we used, isam we used isamyl alcohol, which actually uh, activate the Fritz pathway, and in fact, cells uh, reverse uh, a lot more as compared to wild type. And when we actually obtain chymographs of 3CD GFP uh, cells treated with this compound, we found that, uh, so here is a measurement of how static clusters are. So basically, the number of immobile clusters over the total. And so here we actually see that uh, clusters are less dynamic as compared to Waltep. Of course, these amyl alcohols can also have some general effects on cluster, on actually uh, some indirect effect on, on cluster mobility. So um, we wanted to generate, actually what we did, we generated a point mutation uh, in 3CD that is known to activate the, the pathway. And in fact, cells with these point mut mutations are um, again constitutively active. So they reverse a lot more uh, than Waltep. And when we um, made the same measurements, we found that actually in this case, clusters are even more dynamic than isamyl alcohol, suggesting that luckily cluster dynamics are related to the uh, Fritz activity, are a sign of Fritz activity. Okay, so um, 
Now, last question that we wanted to, uh, to answer was, what is the biological function of this um, DNA binding? So as I said, um, so first we, we looked at signaling. So how the nucleoid binding affects signals, signaling. And for this, we measured the reversal frequency of, um, of a string that is incapable to, for, to both form clusters and so to bind DNA. And as you can see from here, actually cells uh, have a slightly impaired reversal frequency as compared to wild type, but cells are still capable, capable to perform, but um, PCD is still capable to transduce signal. And this was not surprising because even in E. coli and in other bacteria, it has been shown that clustering, chemoreceptor clustering, is not strictly important for signaling, and that signaling unit, receptor, uh, key signaling units are still capable of uh, actually respond to signals. So, um, and a, a, another uh, um, possibility was that actually the nucleoid binding was important for segregation. This was very exciting to us. So we wanted to investigate whether actually the nucleoid binding was important for segregation of free CD clusters. And for this, we actually analyzed the hundreds of cells, and cells are here ordered according to their length. In each cell, we actually detected the nucleoid with the DAPI staining and the free CD clusters. And actually, we can see that we can disc even discriminate when cells, uh, cells that, that actually start with the nucleoid segregation and, and, uh, and division. And um, so the, first, we actually measured the, the number of clusters in each cell. And actually, we found that um, the number of free CD clusters in cells is uh, sort of proportional to the nucleoid, to the size of the nucleoid, which is uh, so, sort of like um, it was expected, but it also suggests that basically clusters form wherever there's room uh, on the nucleoid. So as soon as the nucleoid start um, increasing in size, new clusters, fo new clusters form. However, we also found that the, the number of, uh, of clusters uh, for each nucleoid size was very, very variable in cells, suggesting that probably the, the assembly of free CD clusters is rather a stochastic behavior. And when we actually um, looked at uh, cluster partitioning in cells that had clearly two nucleoids, we actually found that uh, the segregation was not faithful at all, and only a, um, around 30% of the analyzed cells had the same number of clusters on the two nucleoid, whereas the other cells had very different cluster distributions, uh, distributions um, uh, between the two nucleoids. So we were kind of like, in, in, at the beginning, we were a little bit uh, deceived by these results, but then and we actually looked at all, all of our results together. And, and here I'm just gonna, um, I'm just going to propose some hypothesis. This is pure speculation. So we actually, um, what we actually think is that this ability of free CD to bind the nucleoid generate actually a, an heterogeneity of, of, of cluster distribution and organization in the population. And this organization is actually kept during, uh, keep, uh, kept during cluster segregation. And this um, cluster heterogeneity, this, this uh, heterog heterogeneic organization generate uh, heterogeneity in the, in the regulation of the reversal frequency, so an heterogeneic phenotype. Because if we can see here, actually um, reversal frequency in a mutant that is incapable to form clusters um, are more actually narrow as compared to wild type, which has actually more, a more wide distribution of the reversal frequency. So, and, and, we, and, and moreover, we think that this heterogeneity that we observe in wild type and we, that we don't see in a, in a free CD strain where free CD cannot bind the nucleate and form clusters can actually be important for some mixococcus social behaviors because, so when we look at some uh, social behaviors like social swarming or uh, some predatory behavior, we can actually see that the strain that is impaired uh, in the nucleate binding as a, as a swarming that is um, defective as compared to wild type, even if intermediate between, between wild type and a strain that is completely deleted of free CD. And even a predat a, the, the predatory behavior, we can, sorry, we can actually see that after a, um, 
I don't know why I, 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 lose, I lost here the labels, but after only, uh, after 48 hours, while wild, a wild type called uh, Myxococcus strain is um, able, uh, able of uh, invading the E. coli colony, uh, free CD strain is completely incapable of invading an E. coli colony, but a free CD delta N terminus, N -terminus is uh, actually impaired as compared to wild type. So our conclusion is that, um, so free CD is able to bind the nucleoid um, through its N terminal domain. And this uh, nucleoid binding serve actually um, to provide a scaffold, just, as, uh, just like the membrane for transmembrane chemoreceptor, so that free, the free system can form clusters analogously to other bacteria where the um, receptors have transmembrane domains. Um, we also show that cluster dynamic can be related to Fritz activity, and we propose, just as an hypothesis, that this clustering might actually, while it's not strictly important for signaling, like in other bacteria, it can be important for other regulatory uh, functions, such as generate um, a phenotypic heterogeneity that is important for some mixosocial behaviors. And with this, I would like uh, to thank uh, the, the Audrey, who, who is the person who did all of this work, is a very talented a postdoc in the group. I'd like to thank Tam Mignot and our collaborators and finding a new for your attention. And I'm ready to take questions.